opening statement? Sure. Well, it's uh, good to see everyone. I appreciate everyone getting on this Zoom. Uh, obviously, today was an interesting day, a very good day. And it was all about uh, a balancing act between, obviously, bowl preparation and early signing day, which really early signing day has become the major signing day. Um, I thought our staff did a tremendous job, our recruiting department. We were able to address a lot of needs. I will emphasize we are not done yet. Uh, we have more to come, but we were able to sign 20 high school seniors, uh, very, very balanced in terms of 20 on offense, 20 on defense. Uh, you know, I think we were able to fill some, some program needs, you know, at every single position, but we still uh, are going to continue to evaluate and we are still going to continue to add to this class. Um, we still need to correct some deficiencies uh, in our program that will be addressed uh, through the transfer portal, but also through high school recruiting uh, when we get into the second signing period as well. Uh, we did sign, uh, I believe, three transfers right now to grant or uh, institutional grant aids, um, but we will not release them until they're on campus, uh, as I think you all are very aware of, is there's nothing binding. It binds us to them, but it does not bind them to us. So we have to continue to recruit. Uh, we need to continue to evaluate as the portal continues to evolve as well. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the great thing too about being active in bowl season and postseason play is it, it allowed me the opportunity to continue to evaluate our freshman class, to continue to evaluate our young players in our program, get them invaluable repetitions, but also be able to kind of look into a crystal ball and say, okay, who's going to be ready for us next year? Who maybe needs another year of growth and development? How do we need to continue to add uh, to this class? And what are our needs? And as we know, our needs are constantly evolving um, as we continue to evaluate our team. Uh, excited about uh, some, some uh, rankings, and I know rankings don't mean anything. Like I said, you really should rank the classes about three years from now uh, after they're in their program and how you grow and you develop. But uh, this is the, the third straight year where we will have the number one recruiting class in the Sun Belt with some, uh, with some uh, major recruiting websites. Uh, again, it uh, takes a full effort. Uh, again, I want to thank our coaches. I want to thank uh, our support staff, our recruiting department, probably more so than anything, our current players. They're the ambassadors of Arkansas State football. They did a tremendous job. And then all the people in the community of uh, Jonesboro, Northeast Arkansas, everyone that really, you know, helped us in terms of the restaurants and uh, the bookstore and uh, the different car uh, dealerships in town, you know, all of those things that go into putting on uh, a great, great recruiting weekend and official visits. So, so many people have done so many things. And then, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Jeff Puritan, you know, Dr. Todd Shields are giving of their Saturdays. And then all the professors that would show up for our academics on Saturday as well. You know, I think when you look at this class, I think the first thing that comes to mind is you always look at the quarterback position and uh, to be able to sign a quarterback of the magnitude of Josh Flowers, uh, first time in school history that we've signed an ESPN top 300 uh, prospect. And it's only the fourth time in Sun Belt history that a 300 top ESPN prospect is signed in the Sun Belt. So I think when you look at that, uh, you know, for the future and stability of the quarterback position, we all know what, what, uh, you know, Jalen and Rayner has met to us and he'll continue to grow and develop. You know, Jackson Daly continues to grow and develop. And now you add Josh Flowers into your program and uh, we'll be excited. Josh will also be a mid-year enrollee. And we look at um, just from a high school senior standpoint, we'll have four mid-year enrollees. That's Jay, uh, that's Jalen Bordley, Drew Collins, Josh Stone, uh, Kyle Williams is still work in progress and then Josh Flowers as well. So it's actually four, could be five possible uh, with Kyle Williams. So I could go on and on, but, you know, I, I appreciate you guys listening. And I'll just go and let you guys take over and answer any questions you all may have. Coach, you mentioned Josh Flowers. He's a number 13 rated quarterback in the nation here on Rivals. 
a lot of really good offers committed to Mississippi State at one time. What was that battle like to go out there and, and get a guy with the caliber offers that he had? Well, it's exciting. And Keith Heckendorf did a tremendous job. Um, you know, and each program assesses where they're at when a new coach comes in. And, you know, we recruited Josh very strongly. Uh, coach Heckendorf was in there, built a relationship. And then it's one of those chaotic days where you're trying to manage bowl practice. And, uh, you know, again, so many people helping, you know, with the private planes. I was able to get on a plane, uh, fly to Mobile, uh, have a home visit with him and his mother and his high school coaches and then get back for practice. And, uh, you know, and then we got him obviously on an official visit, had a great weekend. Uh, he felt extremely comfortable. You know, all our players did a great job with him and we're really excited. But there's a lot. There's a lot of twists and turns. Uh, that go into the recruiting of a top prospect like that. Uh, but again, our players did a great job with him when he was on campus about our vision. Jalen Jackson, uh, all those guys did a great job of his in his recruitment as well. Um, so again, uh, it's a team effort, but uh, to, to land an individual of that magnitude, now we'll find out how he grows and he develops. And it's really um you can't put a lot of expectations on him. Everyone develops at the same time. But I think just like with Jalen's case, having him here for spring football is really going to benefit him and our football team. Coach, what are some of the deficiencies you still need see moving forward that you need to address immediately for next fall? Well, I still think it starts in the lines of scrimmage, um, you know, so, you know, we have to get bigger across the board. Um, so we'll look to add at the, you know, at the offensive line, the defensive line, particularly on the edges of our defense, a speed rusher type. And then, uh, you know, internally at the defensive tackle position, we need to improve our linebacker position. We need to add to the depth. Uh, you know, we're really, really excited about Chase Bogle. Uh, you know, I think, He's one of those individuals you talk about loyalty. He had about eight offers in this past week of people trying to tempt him, and he straight stayed true to his word. And I can't say enough about him, and he's extremely talented. But we need to continue to uh, develop our linebackers, but we need to add to that. And then, as we know, we're going to be exceptionally young at the corner position. Uh, we made a commitment to the high school ranks uh, with some very, very talented freshmen, but we're going to need a couple older veteran uh, players to come in to kind of uh, help build some stability in that room from a maturity standpoint. So when you look across the board, um, we're looking at a punter. You know, we graduate uh, an all-conference punter from a special team standpoint. Defensively, I spoke about a defensive tackle, defensive ends, uh, some linebackers. You know, we still need another safety and then, you know, some corners as well. So really, we're going to add to all position groups offensively. I spoke about the offensive line. You know, um, again, everything is about just bringing in quality football players that you can grow and develop and that can add to uh, the stability of the program in terms of overall depth. So, again, if there's a player out there that fits our profile, we're going to go after them. You know, I think the other thing when you look at it, when you look at the states represented, I, I was really pleased. You know, I thought, you know, for the first time we signed six individuals from the state of Texas. So I thought we made really good inroads in the state of Texas. That's something that we need to do. You know, we stayed at home, uh, you know, and we talk about the lines of scrimmage in the state of Arkansas. We were at, you know, we were able to add an offensive lineman and Treshawn Hunt and then also uh, with Alex Martin, you look at Alex Martin, he comes to us uh, from Parkview in Little Rock, and we talk about understanding a winning culture. You know, he's won back-to-back -back state championships, and uh, I love him. I love his personality. I think, you know, he's going to bring that winning edge to us. And, you know, on his official visit, we spoke about, okay, you won the first state championship how did you not allow complacency to set in? And he was one of the great leaders on that football team that helped them win the second state championship. And then, you know, we kept our connections again with four in the state of Alabama. And then you look at the South, two from F Florida, three from Georgia, one in Mississippi, you know, Louisiana, and then Kansas is, is developing 
uh, you know, to be a good uh, spot for us because of our location and vicinity. So we had another individual from there. So again, you know, we have a very, very large recruiting footprint just based on where we're at. Um, so we have to be able to go anywhere and everywhere to find a quality player that fits our profile. And we are able to do that. And again, I can't stress enough that we will, uh, you know, we will continue to add to that. I think the other individual that comes to my mind is Kyle Williams. He was an individual that was committed to another Sun Belt team. You know, we just kept being persistent. We were able to flip him and we're excited about him. He's from Slidell, Louisiana. And that's also the hometown of Eddie Smith. Eddie had a big role in that recruitment as well. Coach, you mentioned the, the two guys from Florida. I wanted to ask you about JV and Showers from Pensacola. He's listed as an athlete on uh, on Rivals. Where do you kind of see him potentially playing at? Yes, he'll play receiver for us. And we're excited about him. And, you know, that's a relationship that was born through the summer. And, again, you know, I think, you know, it was a great lesson to our staff because, I'm as you guys know, I'm extremely persistent um, about the summer months, uh, the months of May and June, and getting prospective student athletes to your campus. And when you look at playing an early bowl game like we played on the 23rd, we didn't have much time to go out on the road and recruit. We really only had one week out on the road recruiting. So, you know, a lot of these individuals, I can't say enough about their loyalty. You know, I brought up Chase Vogel and all the numerous offers that he had. There was a lot of these individuals that stayed true to form. But a lot of these relationships and that trust began in the months of June and July where we had them on our campus. And that's big, you know, and moving forward, especially when your expectation is to be playing in postseason play every single year. Butch, what impact uh, did having a bowl game this year play on this class? Before you were kind of selling promises, and, and now you kind of have a little bit of reality to show these guys. What impact did that have? Well, Jeff, I think you're exactly right. Um, you know, there is evidence. There is evidence to what we're building. I think they could feel the energy when they came on campus. They could feel the energy of game days when they come to the stadium in Centennial Bank Stadium. A lot of these individuals were on hand when we played Texas State. So they got the witness becoming bowl eligible. So, you know, I think all that, you know, comes into play. Uh, now you have proof, you have evidence about what you're doing and what you're building upon. Uh, but again, a lot of these relationships were formed in June and July. But then when you have, you know, a decent season like we had and you get in the postseason play, that obviously helps tremendously. Kind of piggybacking on Jeff's question there. Played a lot of – we spoke about it a lot this year, playing all the freshmen that you played. How much did that play into this year's class? A lot. Um, you know, that's something that we sold. And, again, people are going to tell you one thing – but you need factual evidence, you know, and it gets back to that fact check we talk about. And I want to say we're fourth or fifth in the country and most true freshmen played. So, you know, if if you're talented enough and we believe you give us an opportunity to win, we're going to trust you and we're going to play you. It doesn't matter if you're the first year in our program or the fourth year in our program. So, again, our freshmen have meant a lot to us this year in terms of providing some depth uh you know, providing a foundational piece and moving forward. But I do think that that helped because we were able to show them, hey, look, you're going to come in here and you're going to have an opportunity to play. Does having, uh, being in a bowl game, does that help even more with the portal guys? Because a lot of those are, are in the later stage of their college career and, and they don't want Jeff, to go through a building process. Jeff, Jeff, do you want to know what helps in the portal? Three letters, N-I-L, name, image, and likeness. That's what helps in the transfer portal. Um, but, yes, I do think uh, it helps some. I think every individual enters the portal, and I'm being kind of funny with you a little bit, but also I'm also bringing some reality as well. Uh, but I think every individual goes into the transfer portal for their own certain reasons. And I think what you have to do, what we have to do, I'm talking as we, 
is you have to make sure are they a fit for your program. You know, we're probably right now through this whole process, the most that we'll probably add is maybe seven. Um, and I think what happens is because of the success of the last two recruiting classes and then this class, um, you know, you can be very, very selective uh, in the transfer portal. And what we really found is that there is as many talented high school players out there as there was in the transfer portal. So, you know, we would rather bring the high school player in, develop them uh, into our culture. You know, they don't really know anything. They haven't been in anyone else's culture. So we can kind of mold them, groom them and grow them. Uh, so we've been very, 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 very selective uh, in the portal. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, the individuals that came asking for things, we we got off them a little bit because I still think the main thing is the main thing. Uh, you got to love playing football and you got to want to be here and you want you must have a purpose behind you. So I'm excited about the portal individuals that that we signed today, which we'll release here in a little bit. Um, you know, they met our profile. Uh, and again, I'm excited because I think they'll help our program, but we still have a long ways to go in recruiting. You know, we're going to continue to add to this and moving forward. But in terms of a bowl game, yes, I think anytime you win, anytime you play on national television, all those things, I think, brings credence to your program. There's always battles out there. Who was somebody you had to really battle hard for? But also, who was somebody that maybe as soon as they jumped in, they were just here, didn't matter who came after them? Well, I think they all have recruiting stories. Um, but I'll tell you this, you know, Alex Martin could have went a lot of places. And I can't say enough about his loyalty to this state, to Arkansas State University. And I think here's the thing that we're building here. And it's a vision and it's an image, okay? You don't need to leave this state. I still think we have too many players that leave this state chasing a logo. And when all you really have to do is, in Northeast Arkansas particularly, you have a great football program. You have a great institution in Arkansas State University. And I think we need to continue to get over that. You get over that by winning and producing great football players. Uh, but there's no reason to leave this state to chase a logo. You have everything that you need right here. And I think that's something of continuing to educate people about what we have to offer, you know, the quality of coaching staff that you're going to get, the quality of connections with life after football. If you want to live in this state, why would you not come to school here? It does not make sense to me. And then, you know, the if you want to go play on Sundays, you know, we have over 62 players that we have put in the National Football League that are on active rosters. There's only three other programs in America that can say that from a coaching staff standpoint. So, again, we have everything here. Um, but Alex Martin was one of those individuals that didn't waver. Obviously, we talked about Josh Flowers. Um, you know, Jalen Bordley is a young man out of Texarkana, Texas, uh, who was committed to Oklahoma State. Um, I think he brings some position flexibility, whether it's at the linebacker position, whether it's the at the running back position, but he's a very, very talented football player. So I think when you add position versatility, that really helps your recruiting class. But again, uh, you know, Montez Redding, um, you know, we were neck and neck with a, with a number of schools. He's a very talented wide receiver, uh, you know, out of Jonesboro, Jonesboro, Georgia. And, uh, you know, I am great. I had a great home visit there. Uh, one of the best players I ever recruited uh, that played for me was from Jonesboro, Georgia, and Cam Sutton, who is the highest paid free agent corner in the National Football League for the Detroit Lions. And we go there to do a home visit, and there's a number of other schools there. And we're in the gym, and the basketball coach who helped me recruit Cam, uh, Cam comes over to us. Cam Sutton's sister worked at the school. You know, Cam's mom FaceTimes me, then Cam's driving home from practice FaceTiming me, knowing that we're in Jonesboro. I think all those things uh, help, but Montez Redding is an extremely gifted and talented wide receiver, uh, very, very competitive. 
uh, and he has length. I think that's the other thing we needed to do from a receiver standpoint is we needed to get bigger on the perimeter. We needed more length. We were able to do that. Um, you know, to be able to go to Atlanta and get Josh Stone is going to be a mid-year enrollee. I think that really helps the corner position. You know, we were able to get into other areas of Alabama with Gulf Shores and Mobile, obviously with Josh. So I think that helps. So again, a across the board, you know, there's some developmental players. And I think it gets back to in the Sun Belt, you win with consistency and continuity. That is the number one thing. And, you know, you can't be a yo-yo of changing coaches. You can't, you know, you can't dip into the emotions of it. You just have to stay the course and you win with consistency. And, you know, I think it's a dangerous life to live when you live year by year by the portal. The, the one consistency in terms of recruiting is high school recruiting, but you have to be willing to, to grow and develop them, and it takes years. Um, but I'm excited about this class. It's a great you know, class to build upon, but there's also some development that's going to need to occur within that class. Mention wanting to add size uh, in, in the trenches, and but also mention you know in-state kids. Another in-state kid, Trayson Hunt from Bentonville. You know, big, big kid, six foot six. You know, close to three hundred pounds already. Yes, uh, you know we talk about you know big body guys. You know, big bodies that grow and develop, and he's one of those. Uh, great character, great competitor, has really, really, really good size. And he's going to do nothing but obviously get better. I think his best football is ahead of him in his body structure. So he's going to be a, a big player for us. And again, he's one of those players that you can grow and develop in your system, develop your mentality in the F offensive front. So we are really excited about him. I think, you know, the two players that we were able to get from the state of Arkansas, you talk about quality young men, you talk about high character, and you talk about competitive character. They fit our profile. Guys, anything else for Coach? I'm good. Well, really appreciate you guys, and good seeing you all, and we'll be seeing again soon, and I look forward to seeing you at the bowl game, and good day today for the Red Wolves. Wolves up.